Hello everyone, I'm Brahmitra. Welcome back to the Dark Herald updates. This is the third Dark Herald update. This is the Red Witch and Black... Mm. Oh, it's the Red Witch update, right? So that's fine. I actually thought it was going to be the other way around. I thought it was going to be mostly Black Knight um, and very little Red Witches, but it's going to be no Black Knight and a lot of Red Witches. So that's really good. Um... That's really good. Red Witches is the one everybody really wanted anyway. The Black Knight has a lot of information about it, so this is actually really perfect. It is I mean, if you want, if you if you were like really hoping for some Black Knight stuff, just go watch YouTube, watch the the Gen Con videos. There's some channels for Gen Con videos. I would just recommend that. Uh, that way you can get your fix for Black Knight. But all in all, it's for the best that we get Red Witches first. So this is actually. Really, really great. Um, side note, just for this, I was just recording, I, I mean, I'm already done recording, and I was editing when this video went up, a white speaker lore video. Uh, so that will be coming out. I wanted to get it out before the update, but, you know, it is what it is, and I, I couldn't. So it is what it is. But it will be up tomorrow or tonight still. Um, Probably, most likely tomorrow, because this will go up, and I'll only a couple of one video at a time, so that will be that. I'll have to render this. But that's it. I, it's, it's great. That's it. The, you'll get a whole white speaker lore video. I know everyone's always been wanting me to do lore videos. I'm going to do it. It's coming. I'm editing it. It's awesome. Um, I'm really excited for it, because a lot of all this stuff that's in this update... Uh, me and my the person who we talked to... Uh, for on lore, uh, we kind of nailed a lot of this stuff, so that's uh, I'm really happy. <laughs> so, with that, let's go into the actual update. We got a mini gambler's chest update. Um, I'm just gonna go past it. So, here we go Dark Herald number three. Hello again, and welcome back to another Dark Herald. This month, I'll be divulging the secrets of three white speakers. These tall beauties do more than just tell stories that grant you mysterious abilities. For starters, they shoot arrows at you. Uh, these are the Red Witches. As no two nemesis monsters with quick hands, sharp eyes, and even sharper arrows. So, this is all good. This is all really cool. Um, I'm glad there's a lot of, like, you know, secrets... There's a lot of stuff that hints towards what white speakers are. So this is a lot of cool stuff. Just just a lot of cool stuff. Um, the, so here we have Red Witches and Cloaks on the Hunt. So this is a cloak right here. This is what's called a, a red speaker cloak. They're just like red... They're just white speaker initiatives trained to become red speakers. It's really cool. They, they, they kind of switch... And take the hits for the red speakers. They use their their cloaks to teleport around. That's how th that's how this works. Um, the physical cloaks, not actually these cloaks, but I guess both is true <laughs> since these are cloak cloaks. So uh, that's really interesting. So you can see here they're wearing the deprivation suits. Um, this is what all this all there. This is just really jet black, right? Um, if you go back and look at the original pitch images and stuff. I always, I thought it was more like a mannequin, but the, this is just a jet black deprivation suit here that they're wearing. So, um, it helps protect them from the cloak. So, and here, this is Nico herself. She's, you can see she's got blood magic here. It's all curling around uh, as she's withdrawing from, this is yet another white speaker who's being killed. Uh, I don't know if this is them hunting a white speaker I don't know if that's exactly what's happening here. I mean, they do hunt and kill white speakers. That is what they do. These are like the enforcers for the cult, but this could just be like a cloak that got switched to, and now she's drawing arrows out of. But as you can see, this is the blood. Uh, they have blood magic that goes all around them. This is super cool. This looks like it's like a base of blood for the, like their blood rituals. You can see the hand coming out of it. Here is Seer. So she's got like a little blood, a blood crow here. I'm assuming this is made from magic. I'm assuming this is a little magic, a blood magic 
thing. She's manifested this like a familiar is what I'm assuming this is. I don't think these are actual things, but they're like blood blood crows. You can see a lot of white speakers, they have necklaces of their, their, their crow skulls around their on their necklace. Um, so this is Seer. You can see she's got like an elegant cloak here. And she's got the really long bow. And again, this is just flood or blood flowing out of the base. Just really thematic for the blood, uh, for the Red Witches, for their blood magic. And then this was Brawl over here. Uh, so you can see we got all these cloaks. These cloaks are going to be pretty much tokens. I think they're probably going to work like Tyrant kind of does, how he teleports around and you put tokens down behind. So I think that's pretty much familiar how it is. Um, again, I'm really excited because the lore video we actually did on this, I wish I would have got it out before this, but... Uh, it really goes in depth and we got a lot of this stuff pretty accurate so I like that it's pretty cool so here's Brawl like I just said uh, this is the white speaker leader who is not a male this is a female still uh, she's using a story uh, to change her physique she's got different stories than uh, the ones she uses here, you can see blood coming out of the survivor going up. It uh, looks like it's kind of going into her veins even. But uh, her story, she needs the super strength to use this bow here. Uh, this is the bow with Surpass, I think it was, which is a new ability, which is really cool. So uh, she's got she's under like a spell that, that controls her physique, that puts her body like this, or why it doesn't look like the other white speakers. The other white speakers use um, that more so... You know, for eight, she's still ageless, but this like the these bodies that they have here, these perfectly perfect bodies and stuff like that, um, peak physical condition bodies and everything. It's a it's a story. It's like part of their magic. Uh, here's Seer, which is really neat because they uh, white witches are kind are not white witches. White speakers are kind of seers, so uh, really neat here. I think this is a 3D print. It looks like it's a 3D 3D print, not uh, the actual resin here. I don't know if this is chipped here. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe this is some kind of something she picks off of or whatever, but it looks like this is just chipped. So uh, here's Nico, Nico herself. Nico is the, um, uh, she's the one from the white box. She's from the settlement in the snow event. So this is Nico. Uh, we already know Nico was part of it. He had confirmed before that that was indeed Nico. Again, these look like they're kind of roughed up. So these look like they're, these are the 3D prints, like the hair and stuff. They're kind of clean. Um, very neat here. You can see the body riddled with arrows. It's another white speaker and she's taking the blood out of it. Really neat. Uh, so let's go down. The Red Witches, the Red Witches enforce the strict codes of the white speaker cult. Um... The only white speakers with permission to kill their own. They are entrusted with hunting down potential threats. So in that, it would be like pariah or survivors. Uh, eliminate exiled members. That's fade. We talk about fade in that coming up lore video. And powerful relics to add to the cult's armory. Again, this is like... I don't know, it's kind of weird, but this seems like they're kind of implying that the Red Witches might also be sword hunters because sword hunters usually track down uh, arms for the armory. But it is what it is. I mean, they probably also clear the way for that. Uh, there's a whole thing with Fade. We, we, we talk about it in the lore video. I'm really excited to get that out. I wish I could have got it out before that, or before this, but really cool. Really cool here. So the Red Witches are sisters, but not identical triplets. Okay, so that's new information. I didn't, uh, from the way that's worded, it doesn't sound like, you know, like how nuns refer themselves as sisters and stuff. Like, this sounds like they're literally blood related, but they're not triplets. Because you wouldn't say that if they were, if you were just using the term sisters, like, like, you know, like, like saying like, you know, best friends or something or sisters in that, in that method, right? It sounds like this, literally these three are 100% family. Um... They have three distinct models, each with their own unique strengths, weaknesses, and fighting styles. Brawl hits hard and even harder to wound, but has limited range capabilities. Seer can snipe foes from afar and parry attacks, but is pract uh, 
Particularly vulnerable if you manage to breach her defenses, Nico has masterful footwork and can take on multiple opponents with a barrage of arrows, but, it is, but is not as adept as dealing a decisive blow compared to her sisters. So, we can go back to this image here. Um, it's not the best depiction. <laughs> she's not like, I mean, Sears not super far away in this. As you can see, she's not like, she's just here. But you can, here, this, this, so this one probably here was done by Nico. <laughs> These two were done in by Brawl. This one right in the eye, you can see the eye coming out. Definitely sniped. So that's, you can see, uh, she inst instantly, uh, interestingly has this blade bow is what she was pitched as Nico was having that uh, so that's kind of interesting and you can see here's this the bow with surpassed but he's also using or she is also using the uh, the sword here so now of course complementing any strategies or complicating any strategies against these enforcers is the fabric of their witching cloaks which allow the red witches to seamlessly switch places with one another this maneuver enables them to execute complex movements that scramble the tactics of their opponents and mask the individual sh and mask their individual shortcomings. Players will soon find that the deadliest aspect of the Red Witches is not their individual abilities, but the teamwork that they can exhibit. So this is super cool. Doesn't tell us what Trick Transport here is, but you can see Boiling Blood. This is Nico specific. See, this is super cool. So I wonder if they'll have one AI deck or if this is Nico's AI. But if these are all, um, if this is all the AI deck, then I'm assuming that Nico is the one who's performing these, right? So it will be Nico will pick target. She'll pick the threat with the most tokens in range or the closest survivor. No target packed. We don't know what that is. But then she'll move into range and attack. This attack gains additional speed for each bleeding token the target has. So it's range 6, speed 1, accuracy 3 plus, damage 2. And then Nico will perform trick transport, which I'm assuming will... Well, here. So later skirmishes with the Red Witches may even see them accompanied by cloaks trainees of the cult each outfitted with their very own cloak further muddling or muddying the flow of battle so uh shrewd settlements that have experienced the cooperation of the red witches firsthand may be able to mimic their techniques working together working together to pull off feats greater than the sum of their parts so this is really interesting these are the initiates so in the lore video, we talk about these will. Nico was originally a white speaker. She must have gone through, through this, right? These are trainees trying to be red speakers and they wear this deprivation cloak to protect them from the cloak itself. So she, at one time she was these, I would assume all three of the sisters at one time were initiates like this and then they get promoted. So these, they swap and teleport around and take hits for the um, red witches. So here we have uh, Brawler's Bow, which is why that uh, one sister's name is Brawl. <laughs> B-R-A-L, Brawl. <laughs> it's probably short on Brawler. This is a weapon, melee, ranged, bow, katar. This is a bow katar. Yegroot, don't know what that is, and then two-handed. Weird katar, two-handed guitars, neat. Gain, so this is the Surpass here. So Surpass 5. This was originally in the glossary the surpass ability but it always said like i wonder what this does so surpass five this is just surpass right here is surpass gain plus five strength when attacking with this weapon if the monster has not been wounded this round so that's what surpass does that so i would assume you don't need this all the time on, on cards it just surpass five means if that monster hasn't been wounded you get you gain that amount of strength plus x strength so you could have surpass two then we have Sears Bow, which again, uh, this is Sear, her bow, her sniping one. This is a ranged bow, yeg root two-handed. Again, irreplaceable, it's cumbersome, range nine. This weapon gains deadly three if you are performing a follow-up. So I'm assuming, if I could guess at what follow-up is, I'm assuming that's if you've acted after another survivor. That's my guess, so... If you were attack, if someone else attacked and then you would act after them, 
you're gaining follow-up. You're doing a follow-up attack. So uh, this is interesting right here, right? So this bow right here, the really interesting thing here about the Sears bow, this looks very familiar, right? If you're going to give deadly three to something, you want almost no strength on it, right? Because you're going to just mostly critical because this just proves here that deadly three, they expect you, well, if you have deadly three, you just innately are going to hit on a seven plus, right? That's just a wound for you if there's a critical hit location. The risk is when the hit locations have criticals very far in between, then, de then luck doesn't really play into this, right? So you're only going to be critting. This is the major reason as to why Vespertine Bow was so originally broken. And as you can see here, at least they realize that the strength isn't even a factor on these deadly stuff, right? So uh, it really does beg the question why they didn't just make Vespertine Bow zero strength. It's just so ridiculous, but whatever. It is what it is. On the other hand, harnessing the power of the witch's cloaks will be much more in, will be a much more involved process than simple observation. Only after constructing armor sets that can safely protect their wearers from the caustic properties of the red cloaks can survivors dabble in the trick transport of the white speakers. So, this here is the armor that survivors will be creating so they can wear the cloaks. And then this is a survivor uh this is survivor gear. So this is not like white speakers and stuff. This is survivor gear. So survivors make this, and then once you have the full set, you can probably say you can wear a red cloak. Now we can't see what red cloaks are, but I'm assuming the set bonus of these will be the red cloak. That is the set bonus. That is a very unique way to handle a set bonus, um, to make it dependent on having it. Something like that, right? That's really that's a really unique, cool thing, and that's just speculation. But it, you, I would hope that that's how it works. I would hope that the red cloak can't be worn unless you're wearing the full deprivation suit here. This black, that black thing. So this is the black and red armor, right? So it's either going to be a hybrid suit with the red cloak being hybrid, giving a separate armor bonus, and the black just gives the armor bonus of you can wear a red cloak, and then when you put on a red cloak, you get a separate armor bonus. So here is all of this, all this. This is interesting shield here. The sword's pretty neat looking. Looks like pretty endgame gear here. For node two nemesis. Uh, that's currently Kingsman or Slenderman. So I'm assuming it's probably gated, right? Um, you're gonna have to craft this stuff after fighting them a couple times. So. That that if it if it really is truly if it really truly is a node two replacement that's looking at lantern year nineteen without heart fluting, so that makes sense. If you need to fight two or three of them to gate it behind lantern year nineteen, you can't even you wouldn't even get it to lantern year what is it ten or nine for for uh, Kingsman and Slenderman level one. So uh, very neat, very cool. So, and then we have, beyond serving as deadly adversaries, the Red Witches offer players a rare glimpse into the eg enigmatic dealings of the White Speaker cult. Interacting with them may provide more context or even additional options to traditional story events like White Speaker. So that's interesting. But for today, that's all the secrets that I can share. Wouldn't want to end up on the Witches list myself. So... Very neat. Uh, now that we're reaching the end, I'm just gonna go up and touch on this now. I just kind of just over, I just ignored this in the beginning, but we're just gonna go on it again. Uh, the game was just is not done and it doesn't seem like they're just waiting. So a mini game was just update down to about 30 outstanding pieces of artwork with the current team of seven, with a current team of seven artists working hard on them, okay? Anna and I have been spending our evenings tuning up the table results on the philosophies and the player and the play testers are on the final treks through the campaign. Okay, but what? I thought they were just working on God Hand. I hope to return for our April update with firm news about printing and production. So, um, it's not just God Hand, apparently. They never had enough artwork to finish either. So when he said, I just don't like where the game, where the God Hand is, that just wasn't true. They were never done anyway because they don't have enough artwork. 30 pieces of artwork is not related to God Hand, right? That's a lot of philosophies not done. 
It's probably not story events or settlement events or stuff like that. Those are probably all done. Most of the story book, like triggered events and stuff, those that art's probably all done. Most of the core stuff in the book's probably done. These 30 pieces of artwork are probably philosophies and stuff like that. Not, not They're not essential, right? That's probably why they're getting redone. And, you know, adjusting the tables on the philosophies, that's fine, right? Uh, I would hope that the testing team, the play testing team would be the one to tell you how to fine tune these. Not you're just doing it a whim, but whatever. It is what it is. And then um, I hope for an April update, right? So that means this is it. We're not going to get Black. To me, that reads as Black Knight is not coming this, this hopefully. Hopefully the Easter sale happens and then we get the Black Knight update with the Easter sale. Otherwise, the way this reads to me is there's just no intention of doing a, a Black Knight update this month. So, as I said, I fully expected, well, I fully expected this update to be nothing but Black Knight and almost no Red Witches. So, this is a win. This is great. We got Red Witches stuff. It's really awesome. It's really cool. Um, it's a win. In my book, this is a win. Uh, it's just not surprising that all of it wasn't done, right? Why? I just, it's just not surprised. I'm not surprised that he just didn't do it for the Black Knight. Like I said, I was expecting for him to just totally drop the ball on White Witch, or Red Witches, but he dropped the ball on Black Knight, and I don't really care because Black Knight had the Gen, the Gen Con uh, stuff. But it's still just sad that... Why couldn't she just do the Black Knight stuff? Why couldn't it just be here, right? Well, I mean... Whatever. Maybe it will be more thorough next month, or does that mean we're not getting the thing in April? I don't remember what the thing in April was. Either way, I just wish we would have got both, right? Not not so much because I care about Black Knight, just because you said you would do it. Mainly that's why I care that if you would do it. But other than that, this is actually really great. Red, this, this update was awesome. I love Red Witches. Uh, I'm glad the Red Witches thing came through. Uh, I'm really glad that we get to share a lore video. I'm real excited for that, so... Uh, this is actually really good. There's nothing There's nothing wrong with this update. This is perfect. This is the exact thing that should have been happening for the last five years of this campaign. Just short little stuff like this. This is perfect. This is, And he kept his word. It came out. It didn't actually come to, out last minute either. So this is great. This video might actually come up on upload on the day the witch is supposed to. So that's great. Every, this, is, this is great. I have nothing but good, good to say about this. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you... April? Maybe Easter sale? Uh, I'm hoping Easter sale for Black Knight. Otherwise, we'll come back in April for the next Dark Herald.